Good. Uh, thanks, John. So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for kind of sticking around. And I know it's getting sort of late in the day, and I'm kind of aware that, assuming uh, there's only a couple of lightning talks, I'm sort of standing between you folk and some beers. Um, so, my session is probably going to be a little bit different than uh, some of the others that we've sort of done through the course of the afternoon, because it's probably a little bit more software and sort of network related than uh, a lot of the others, which were primarily hardware focused. Um, so just uh, some quick housekeeping stuff, don't feel like sort of at the end of the day that you have to kind of write down copious amounts of notes, all this stuff will be up on SlideShare, it's got all the links to all the projects I'm going to talk about, uh, code samples, all that sort of stuff, and uh, all the code that I'm going to show you is actually sitting in my repo uh, over at GitHub, so I'll, I'll share the link around uh, at the end of the day. Um, so before we get started, just to kind of get a general sort of vibe uh, from all of you sort of sitting here, um, how many of you have done some sort of web development, so primarily sort of server-side development uh, in the past? All right, so pretty much most of you, which is good. Now, with respect to Arduino, how many of you have had a chance to play around with Arduino's uh, networking library? So a kind of a few. All right. So for the purpose of sort of uh, this, this afternoon, um, very quickly, Arduinos you can kind of set up to uh, connect to the internet or connect to your network uh, using either an Ethernet shield or, or something like an Ether 10, which I've kind of got down here. Um, and you can basically just kind of connect them up uh, using, some, using an Ethernet library that's part of uh, the core Arduino library. Now, if you haven't played around with this, really sort of just for the purpose of this afternoon, just sort of think about it as though it's kind of like a networked version of the serial library. Um, but, you know, you can kind of create clients and servers and kind of do uh, some, some more interesting sort of things uh, from there. So to get up to speed with it, um, I'd thoroughly recommend checking out the... Uh, the examples that sit in the Arduino IDE. There's uh, some really good different use cases that kind of sit in the, uh, in the examples folder and just sort of work your way through those and you'll, you'll have sort of clients and servers up and running uh, really in no time. Um, and obviously the, the documentation that sits on the site as well is uh, very, very thorough, so um, very much worthwhile checking that out. So don't worry too much if you hadn't had a chance to play around with it for the purpose of uh, this presentation. Um, really the kind of the principles and the sort of architecture which I'm going to describe to you um, pretty much hold true. Um, so you know, don't, don't feel like you're going to be not understanding some of the code. Um, so there's some really good ways to get uh, Arduino connected to the web and uh, do various different things with it. So I'm going to talk about a couple of um, you know, very straightforward ways that you can get Arduino connected up to the web. First of all, before we kind of move into uh, the real-time nature of um, you know, the kind of the main body of this Prezo. So if all you want to do is get some data out, uh, you know, read, read the analog pins or something like that off your Arduino and present it on a kind of nice uh, single web page and just sort of, you know, just display the information, not really interact with it in any kind of fashion, then check out the examples that sit in the networking library. There's some, some uh, really clear examples of doing exactly that sort of thing. If you want something a little bit more robust, check out the Arduino server project. Uh, just sort of, you know, wraps a lot of the, um, you know, takes off some of the rough edges of the kind of the examples. Um, these are pretty limited in terms of their functionality, but you know, if, if all you're doing is just presenting sort of information, then they're, then they're pretty good. They're good for kind of rough prototypes and things like that uh, when you're playing around with, with the networking side. If you want to do something a little bit more robust, so create a little bit of interaction between uh, a user and whatever your kind of Arduino is connected to, then uh, you can start look to do things like control your I/O pins, um, read various states, and kind of do all that sort of stuff, and use uh, the URLs that you're submitting as the kind of the interface to that uh, in a kind of RESTful sort of way. Then uh, check out Restduino or Webduino projects. Um, both of these are really fully featured, and particularly the Webduino project now is uh, actually getting to the point where it's almost turning into a kind of a fully fledged sort of mini web server uh, on chip, really. So uh, you can do things like uh, deliver images off an SD card. You can send multiple different types of content, so HTML and JSON. Uh, you can customize all the various URLs and whatnot that you want to kind of play around with. So you can do a lot with these uh, almost out of the box um, to kind of create some interesting kind of points of interaction. So clearly there's quite a few ways and I've just sort of shown you sort of tip of the iceberg 
in terms of the number of projects that are available to kind of create interaction between an Arduino and the web already. So given that, why would I want to hook it up to the real-time web? Um, surely using some of these methods that I've already sort of described to you would be sufficient for my needs. Well, you know, quite simply, I can't control my robot army unless I've got real-time interaction with it. Um, you know, so I really want to be able to kind of sit in the pub with my mobile phone web browser and, you know, take over the world using my, uh, you know, robotically controlled Arduinos. Now, realistically, they probably look a bit more like that, um, you know, and they go really, really slow uh, and, you know, they need to be charged up kind of every half an hour. Um, so, you know, Conquest is going to take some time, um, but, you know, we'll get there eventually. Now. <laughs> With the traditional sort of model that I've sort of described so far, the kind of request response model that a lot of you are probably very familiar with in terms of web development, we start running into some limitations when we start playing around with the Arduino. Now, Arduinos, first and foremost, don't really scale very well with lots of concurrency. So, you know, the, the network cards are not really designed to take lots and lots of traffic. Obviously, you know, you're a pretty low-powered uh, device as well. So it's not like a fully-fledged web server that's going to deliver hundreds of requests per second. Um, if you try and build a web app with your Arduino, and if anyone has uh, attempted to kind of do this, then potentially you could end up with you know, hundreds if not thousands of lines of HTML and JavaScript kind of all embedded into your Arduino program. Um, which makes maintainability quite hard. You know, if you want to change some styles or something like that, or the kind of layout of your HTML, all of a sudden it's digging around in your, um, you know, your Arduino sketch to try and make some changes, and then you've got to reflash your device. And if you've got a 50 devices, that could take quite a little bit of time to actually uh, go through and do it. Likewise, if you've ever tried to. Uh, you know, set up a client to read data uh, from the web, so download a web page and kind of process it using the kind of text processing kind of features of the string library, then you know, one, it's slow, um, two, it often crashes because you get buffer overruns, um, you know, and three, you'll probably lock up your network card if you do things like subscribe to a Twitter stream um, or something like that because the sheer amount of, uh, you know, data coming down will kind of lock everything up and you'll have to reset. Um, so many sort of projects look to overcome this by sort of shifting the burden of processing off the Arduino and onto some other sort of client. So if you saw um, last night, Luke and I were sort of playing around with some bits and pieces with uh, the Morse code thing on the Leo stick and uh, you know, wrote a little script to kind of pass that across uh, serial so that we could interrogate Twitter and get all the data off of it, but then pass it over in a kind of nice small sort of chunks that the Arduino will kind of uh, look after. So this is typically the way that we actually kind of deal with this. Now, clearly, um, that's all fine and well, but how long is your USB cable? You know, I might be able to kind of stretch, have my server down here and kind of have my Arduino up the back of the room or potentially down the corridor if I'm kind of willing to run a fair amount of cable. But certainly, you know, if I want to have uh, an Arduino reporting something on the other side of the campus, then this starts not scaling very well. So I need to kind of think about all of these different, uh, you know, types of implications before I can start really kind of getting to grips with networking my Arduino. So the architecture that we are starting to use with the web in real time is a little bit more complex uh, than the kind of stock sort of request response methods that we have typically used um, so far. And at the heart of how I kind of go about doing this is to use WebSockets. Um, so who here um, is familiar with WebSockets? A few. Anyone used it in a project? One. <laughs> okay, so very briefly, um, WebSockets are full duplex bidirectional uh, connections that go over a single TCP connection. So what that means in practice is that um, usually uh, the client, the kind of web browser um, most often, connects to the web server and then they hold open the connection. So instead of doing a normal HTTP request where you make a request, get a response, and the um, connection gets dropped, we actually hold it open. We upgrade the HTTP connection to a WebSockets connection. Uh, and then we can pass data backwards and forwards across that connection without having to kind of pass across all the requests and response headers and kind of do all the handshaking and stuff that we do with a stateless HTTP connection. 
So there's some really good resources for kind of you know diving into this and if you haven't played around with it and you're doing any sort of web development then I can uh, thoroughly recommend to have a play around with this anyway because you'll kind of start thinking about some of your applications a little bit differently. Um, I'm not going to explain all the gory detail of this um, but suffice to say a web uh, socket pretty much allows us to open up a single connection um, between the client and server and we can pass data backwards and forwards over HTTP uh, in real time. So this works really, really well when you're sending very small packets of data with high frequency. So does this start sounding like some of the things that we do with Arduino quite often, particularly if we're doing things like sensors and stuff like that? You know, so it's very efficient when we start playing around with these sorts of uh, data packets and we don't have to worry about all the kind of handshaking on the request response model. So there's three main components to this sort of architecture. So in the center there, we've got the WebSocket server. And this is pretty much just an upgraded web server. So it actually can provide all of your application logic that you would kind of traditionally use on the kind of web server stack as well. So it could be doing things like your authentication, hooking up to databases, um, you know, hooking up to your messaging systems, um, as well as all your kind of other web components as well. So the next bit over here is the kind of the, the browser client. So this typically is used to provide your kind of UI uh, and is a mixture of sort of HTML and JavaScript with probably a little bit of CSS to kind of make it pretty. On uh, this side, which is the bit that we're probably most interested in, um, is the Arduino client. And again, we can kind of process messages as they're kind of coming in um, or send messages up to the server uh, as well. So one of the things with WebSockets is that you typically set them up in a pub sub model. So we kind of have these, this notion of um, you know, publishers, which are things that create data and kind of send it outwards uh, or kind of broadcast it. And then we have this uh, notion of subscribers, which are things that listen for, for data. So we can create some very efficient sort of uh, methods of kind of pushing data around and so this leads to a kind of a vented sort of style of behavior so it kind of mirrors what we sort of do with things like interrupts and stuff like that on the Arduino and we'll get into some code on there in a sec. So to show you how this sort of works in code then, so I'm a Python guy, so I work with uh, Django pretty much day in, day out. Uh, so I use uh, a, a library for Django called Django Socket IO, um, which, uh, which does this, but the principles will hold true if you kind of prefer to use things like Node.js or kind of something like that, then it's, it's the same sort of model. So you can see here that I've got um, some code that responds when I, I get a kind of channel event. So I've got someone subscribing to my ch channel and I kind of do some stuff related to that. And then I've got here, uh, you know, a message event where I've got, uh, you know, someone sending me a message. So I pull some data out of it and then I can either send that message uh, back to the originating client or I can broadcast it out to everybody who's actually listening on that channel. So we can do some interesting things with um, sort of routing messages and whatnot um, as well. This is the web browser code, so it's just a bit of JavaScript. Um, again, you know, connect onto the server, subscribe to the, the channel or the room. Uh, here I'm taking a message, so a message has been passed down from the server, and uh, here I'm just sending a message, passing over some JSON. So we typically work with JSON uh, in the WebSockets uh, area. Obviously it's kind of webby, so you know, JavaScript being a first class language and whatnot, but it works well with Python, uh, and there's some libraries and whatnot that make it easier on the Arduino side as well. So this is the Arduino client, um, well part of it anyway. So this is actually an adaptation of a really good Arduino WebSockets library called, uh, written by a fellow called Kevin Rowling, uh, and it's been adapted to work with Socket.io, which is the kind of particular flavor of uh, WebSockets that, uh, that I use. And uh, you know, it's, it's worth noting as well, this will only work with Arduino 1.0 now. Um, so it takes advantage of some of the newer features, of particularly the networking part of Arduino. So again, uh, whoops. So here I, uh, you know, subscribe into my channel. Um, and one of the things that you have to do with Arduino is that you have to set up a delegate function. So when I get a message back from the server, I have to delegate that uh, off to a function here, which is this one. So in this instance, all I'm doing is I'm grabbing the data and I'm just printing it out to the serial port. So just to say that some data has arrived. In my main loop then, all I'm doing is I'm just monitoring 
uh, to see if there's any messages that have come in that I need to be aware of, and then you know I'm I'm constructing a message which in this case is just a bare bit of text, and then uh, sending that onto the server, waiting a second and kind of doing the same thing. So it's just creating a, a little um, you know almost a ping uh, off to the server. So now you've kind of got the kind of the concept of the building blocks that kind of go into it, and that's pretty much the style that you use every single time. It's those kind of core uh, components, and then you kind of just layer on your kind of specifics of your application on top. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some data from uh, two Arduinos that I've got sitting down on the desk here. Um, we're going to pull the uh, the temperature data off of that. <coughs> um, and then get it to come together on display in a web browser um, that all of you, if you jump onto my Wi-Fi network, will actually be able to see in whatever browser you've got hands on as well. Um, so you kind of see the kind of the way this starts to, to work from a pub sub standpoint. So this is the Arduino code. Now I've, I've sort of left some bits out of this, um, particularly the networking side. Um, We've got uh, two Ether 10s down here, um, which are kind of blinking away sort of furiously. Not very much to them. They're, uh, they're just literally connected with a um, LM335 sensor, which is a temperature sensor. I haven't put all the, uh, the code there for how I get the temperature off. Um, you know, something straightforward to kind of just go and look up. Um, but you can see here, all I'm doing in my sort of main loop is I'm just sort of constructing my JSON. Um, I'm passing over the ID of the sensor that I'm kind of interested in, because obviously I've got multiple of these, and uh, I'm just getting the temperature which I'm, uh, which I'm passing in as well. And then every tenth of a second, I'm just sending a message up to the server. So I'm just publishing this data as it's coming off. Now, I haven't calibrated these or anything like that, so um, you know the data might look a bit wonky, but I've tried to keep it as simple as possible, and all the code for this is up. Uh, in my GitHub. So on the server, we then uh, take the message that's been sent uh, over here. So we're listening on this kind of temp sensor channel. Um, we get the temperature, we, uh, we pull out of it the sensor ID and the kind of the, the value that's been passed along. And then what you'll notice here is that I'm then broadcasting out to the channel what the value of those uh, set that sensor was. Now, what you'll notice um, for those that have kind of got uh, Eagle Python eyes is that I'm listening on one channel, but I'm sending on a different one. And the reason that we do this is to stop what's called echo chambers. Um, and this can happen quite a lot with WebSockets where you get uh, a message and you send back to the originating client um, and broadcast back onto the channel that it's actually listening to. And so what you end up doing is you end up processing loads and loads of extra data that you kind of don't need to. And with Arduinos in particular, because we know that they're kind of relatively low powered for that sort of thing, we don't want to do too much of that, otherwise we'll, uh, we'll overload them. Um, particularly when you scale this up. On the browser side, this is, this is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, I, I subscribe to my channel, uh, and then I'm, I'm listening for a message, grab out the data, and I'm actually handing this off to a little graphing library called Smoothie, which I use to kind of plot uh, the WebSockets data in real time, which you'll get to see in a minute. So pretty straightforward, yeah? It's kind of a very straightforward implementation of uh, what we sort of talked about before. So we've got a demo, assuming my code is all kind of staying up and working nicely. Um, so you can all um, jump onto this as well to, uh, to kind of see this in action. So you will need to jump onto my Wi-Fi. Um, so I've got this sort of little Wi-Fi hotspot, hopefully uh, it holds up. Um, so the, the ID of the network is just AJ Fisher and the password is just QWERTY UI, just the top row of the, uh, the, the letter keys. Um, and then just jump onto the server there, which is 10.016. Now I'm going to just switch um, you know, my screens here. Um, this will work on um, most of the browsers uh, as well as uh, your mobile devices as well. So you can see here I've got um, my little graph uh, with the two temperature uh, values that are sort of coming, coming through. So this one's kind of holding pretty steady. So what I'm just going to do is just uh, hang on to this for a second and you should see it start to creep up um, and then kind of wander back down again. If I do the same thing with the other one. Um, we can kind of see that working in real time as well. So this one's a little bit flaky with the sensor. Um, so you can see that, and if you guys all jump onto that, you should see the same sort of thing um, taking place. So I'm just going to leave that on, so if you want to kind of play around with it and kind of see it, you can view the source and kind of do all that sort of stuff as well. You can see, you can see how the library sort of works. Um, 
So this is a pretty basic example, but it, it kind of holds for, for any way that you might want to kind of put this together. So hopefully now you're starting to kind of think some of the applications that you might be able to find uh, for this sort of setup. Um, now you understand the principles involved. Um, there's lots of applications for this. So the, the first and most obvious one is to just scale out what we've just done there. Uh, you know, you could take a hundred of these sensors and kind of scatter them around, say, uh, this campus to kind of report on what the temperatures are doing around and then pull them together into kind of unified uh, reporting package. So that could be through to a logger or it could be through to a graphical display such as this. Um, likewise, we can actually flip the whole architecture around. So we could use uh, all the web browsers that you guys are using to kind of interact in some methods, so supplying data into the system, and then we could pass that through uh, the server, through down into Arduino. So this is how you would uh, create your robotically controlled army, for example. Um, you know, and there's actually a really good ex uh, example uh, of this on uh, Kevin Rowling's site, who uh, I'll link to in a second, um, and, and the kind of WebSockets client on doing exactly that. Similarly, um, we can actually start using this for things like M2M. So one of, the, one of the sort of things that I'm sort of interested in is how we can use this unified stack um, to be able to kind of work uh, for machine-to-machine -machine type communication. So one of the, the problems historically is that your, uh, your little sort of things like Arduinos or your kind of physical devices tend to kind of use, uh, you know, very esoteric sort of um, protocols and whatnot, and then trying to convert that back into something that you can use uh, via the web or other systems like messaging systems and kind of things like that um, becomes, you know, there's a lot of translation involved. Whereas if we're using this sort of J JSON layer across the entire uh, network, then we get some efficiencies there in terms of uh, what we can actually do with it. And the pub-sub model works very well in that respect because we can say, one one day this might be an Arduino, uh, the next week we might switch it out and put in uh, you know, another device entirely, it might be a, a computer, it might be uh, some other sort of microcontroller. So we can start playing around with this and really creating some interesting opportunities for how we start shifting data around uh, you know, uh, various networks. So if you don't want to kind of muck around with setting up uh, Node or Django servers, um, you know, which, which can be a little bit fiddly, there are some other options available to you. Uh, primarily is this one, a uh, site called pusher.com, which is basically WebSockets infrastructure that you just subscribe to. It's just uh, you know, infrastructure as service. Uh, there's a pusher port of the Arduino WebSockets library. So literally, you just grab your API key, drop it in, and start sending messages. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, it's a paid service, I think, if you go over about 100,000 messages a day. So if you're kind of just playing around with this, then you, know, uh, you shouldn't go too close to that. Um, Socket.io is the kind of library that I use. Um, WebSockets is still relatively kind of new to, uh, to the web spec. So you know, uh, your mileage may vary with the different uh, libraries and whatnot that kind of go about this. But Socket.io is sort of the, um, you know, the most consistent at the moment. So, and it handles things like backward compatibility and whatnot uh, really nicely. So, thanks very much for your attention at the end of, uh, uh, you know, first day. Um, I'll be around. Uh, unfortunately, I can't um, stay for the entire conference, so uh, I will have to go back tonight. But, um, you know, certainly feel free to grab me if you kind of want to delve into this a little bit further and kind of see um, some more of how this all works. And then all my contact details and whatnot are there as well. So any questions? Stumped. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, probably dumb question. The, the resources you put up there, just say we're available, where can I get those? Um, so they'll, they'll be all linked out of the presentation, which I'll put up on SlideShare uh, later on the survey. Okay. Yep, so you can grab hold of them. Anyone else? No? Andrew, thank cool. you very much. Thanks, cheers.